Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla, let's go over the market, let's figure out what has happened today and what we can expect moving forward. So with all that being said and done, let's just jump right into it. If you enjoyed, by the way, don't forget to hit that like button. It does help a lot. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And of course, my membership section is live. The link is down below if you're interested for just uh, $2.99 a month, $3 a month, we'll say. Get access to all my today, thoughts, posts, updates, second analysis, options flow on Tesla every single day that the market is trading. Uh, and uh, yeah, so if you're interested, that link is below for just three bucks a month. So let's get into it. Tesla closing that day down about 0.3% on the day, closing at 176 and 19, which compared to the market is actually an outperformance. The market down about actually 0.7%, both SPY and QQQ, exactly to the T, right? So the market down, we'll say closer to a percentile uh, and Tesla, you know, holding up at least relatively well, respectably well, we'll say nothing crazy, but we you know respectably well, right? Not too bad, not too bad. Now, Let's talk about what the hell this means moving forward. So ultimately today, right, not a much, kind of a nothing burger day. And what I mean, what do I mean by that is there's really not a whole lot that happened, right? We kind of just went sideways. We're just kind of trading within that same sort of price range that we've been trading in for the uh, for the past, like what, three, if you include today, four days now of trading days. So um, well, technically get this candle, I guess, but nonetheless, not a whole lot of action, right? So let's just talk about, you know, what this regardless means. So we're still getting rejected now by that 20 a day moving average, this white line right here. Again, it's not exactly 20 day moving average, but it's close enough on my indicator, right? So we're still just kind of dancing around the mean, right? Like I said before, you know, on the daily chart, we're not overbought, we're not oversold, we're just kind of right in the middle, really just not really sure where to go, it feels like. The stock doesn't really understand or doesn't really know where it wants to go next, right? So that's kind of interesting to, to note, right? It doesn't really understand what, what to do next. But like I said, you just wait for the level. Sometimes you'll have these boring days, but you you know you have those levels in mind. You have those levels set, and you just kind of wait. Let the stock you know let the stock pick it its direction. Don't don't rush it. Just kind of you know, just just be patient, right? And again, just make it simple. The levels for further upside at the very least is essentially well, Tesla. You want to be breaking this green trend line. Let's go back like this, right? And you want to break this green trend line that we've been getting rejected at now several times, all the way back in uh, pretty much December of last year. Got rejected out not too long ago over here. Got rejected out again once here. And now we're kind of just still setting up, going sideways on a declining volume, which is interesting. That means we are building up a pretty large move. I do think Tesla is going to have a pretty large move coming up soon. I don't know when. It could be tomorrow. It could be Friday. It could be next week. I don't know. But it does feel like a large move is starting to build up because we had this massive, massive spike on increased volume. And ever since then, we've been consolidating on lower and lower and lower and lower and decreasing volume. Pretty low volume, actually, too. So definitely a massive move is setting up. It's just a matter of, well, to the downside or to the upside, and nobody knows. But like I said, 182-ish, right? We'll say 182, one give or take of course is the level you want to break for, to break this green trend line if you break this green trend line ultimately i do think that the way to uh, or the path to 200 to 205 dollars is pretty clear i do think it's pretty crystal clear because we have broken this downtrend i'd expect a rejection around there overall a pretty decent retracement probably back down to the 180s and then ultimately wouldn't be surprised to see about 220 next uh, sometime in june july something like that maybe maybe august i don't know exactly when but something like that right sometime in the summer we'll say late spring to, uh, to summer um to the downside, though, to the downside, right? It's pretty simple as well. To the downside, if we break pretty much this level that we've been bouncing off the past four days, including today, which is pretty much anywhere between this kind of 173 ish range so pretty much below 173 to, re to really make it super super simple right if we start losing that level kind of like this right here let me go ahead and draw this like this boom kind of like this 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 kind of line right here roughly right if we lose this line right here roughly again pretty much below 173 um well, that's going to be not good, right? That's going to probably mean that the downtrend is going to start continuing uh, more pain ahead. And at the very least, we'll come back down to, you know, pretty much each major technical level, right? We'll have, if I zoom out over here, we'll have that volume profile, which we're pretty much roughly trading out right now. You can see here this volume profile. We're dancing right around it. But if you go to do, uh, lower, I wouldn't be surprised to see 170 to 168, followed by pretty much 163 to 160. And that's where I would personally think the bottom would be in if we do retrace that low, which from here would be a drop of about uh, eight and a half percent roughly, of course, right? So that's kind of the way I look at it as well, right? Pretty simply put, nothing too complicated. RSI still looking neutral. MACD on the daily chart has officially flipped bearish. So that's a little concerning. What does it actually mean anything? Who knows? We'll see. But you know, it's potentially a concerning sign for the bulls. The bears might be happy about that. The stochastic is, of course, losing a little bit of momentum over here as well. So 
I mean, the stock is not doing a whole lot, to be fair, right? The weekly chart, let's take a look at the weekly chart here quickly, right? Stochastic is still, you know, kind of curling to the, the not really downwards, but it's not really curling, or it's not really pointing upwards anymore. It's kind of flattening out, if you will, right? So, it's, you know, it feels like it's losing a little bit of momentum there. But with that being said, the MACD is still flip bullish, still looks great. MACD has no problems whatsoever. But even with this being said, you know, it wouldn't be too surprising for the MACD to almost come back down for this green line to come back to this red line, almost like a retest of this breakout, the, you know, the green crossing the red, get a kind of like a retest of that, which could be happen or which could happen if we do get that ultimate move down to about the 160s the low 160s we'll say and that could be that little retest for the macd and then i think from there we'll base and then i think from there we'll start making our way back up that's just, that's just an option of course right that's just an option no one knows for sure if that's actually going to happen you just you, you wait for those levels to you know really tell the picture if that makes sense so that's kind of the main thing i'm looking at for tesla right now now if we go over to the daily chart one more time i'm gonna go ahead and remove this for now um, so th there's a few things, and this is why sometimes I'm not a huge fan of using too many uh, trend lines, not necessarily like support or resistance lines, like these is the horizontal lines, but the ones you kind of draw yourself. And again, the main reason for that is pretty simply because... Uh, here we go right it's because watch so you can you can draw the trend line like this right this is option trend line number one so you can be like this oh cool so you know we had this breakdown over here on this massive red candle and then we all we did was come up to retest that we had a false break back into it so it was like a false breakdown then we had a false you know break out i guess or like back into it and then now we're back down again now we're retesting it what's going on there okay cool but what if we just move this down a little bit now, what if it looks like this okay cool now we had an, a couple of false breakdowns today and yesterday and now we're holding back above it cool massive watch potentially setting up here that's a potential or you can even move it down all the way over here and be like okay cool both of you know we got support on this trend line yesterday and today maybe this is the trend line this is why sometimes when you have these kind of you know variations of it i'm not a huge fan of these trend lines it starts to become become like noise and i and i started using it a lot less right because it's just like is it like this or is it like this or is it like that who knows right that, that, that's why it's like that trend line to me is not as important anymore at least the bottom one and the main way i look at it is just simply the horizontal support resistance levels like i said you know break below 173 most likely sees 170 to 168 below that most likely 163 to 160 right um but then this one for instance is a good trend line and the reason for that is because it's simple clear cut there's really just no arguing about this it just touches these touch points perfectly there's really no arguing this is it it makes sense cool no questions asked so that's kind of my little rant about those trend lines that's why sometimes i don't really use them too too much now one thing to note is the fact that options flow is still extremely slow we had some puts coming in towards the end of the day of course but with that being said we also had a pretty nice call coming in two hundred thousand dollars call 250 strike for september 20th that's pretty good and even more potentially interesting or important is the fact that there have been some nice cash secure puts being sold on tesla for june 6th Oh, sorry, seventh, right? You can see a bunch over here, 1.4 million. You had about almost 800,000 right here, right? Uh, you had another 155K uh, right here. Below that, you had a pretty much 500,000, pretty much 100,000, right? All cash record puts being sold throughout the day on Tesla, 170 strike for June 7th, right? Which, of course, is going to be for next week. Pretty interesting to note. So that's a lot of money coming in for that. So clearly the whales think that... So, okay, so this is bullish, but remember, this isn't like bullish, like buying calls, like way out of the money and, you know, way, like maybe even close expiry dates. This is bullish in the sense that they don't think it'll drop too much below 170 and, if, and maybe not even below 170 at all. That's what the whales think, at least by next Friday. That's what they think. So we'll see if they're accurate or not. They probably are. That's a lot of money coming in. But essentially, they're pretty much saying that, yeah, you know what? I don't think it'll drop much below 170. And if it does, I'm okay buying shares there. That's kind of what they're saying, which in my opinion is still bullish. It's just not as bullish as like, you know, let's say like a 2 million call coming in for like two weeks out of like 200 strike or something like that. You know what I mean? So just thought I'd mention that as well. But some whales are definitely some selling some cash trigger puts on Tesla here, which is always a good sign to see. But as of right now, really not a whole lot happened today. Unfortunately, it's just one of those days. We just kind of let it happen and you just kind of be patient to be patient with it and just you know wait this wait for the stock to really give its direction and really decide where it really wants to go next so for now patience is required so i'll keep updating you guys guys and girls of course uh you know what i see and what i expect uh, uh moving forward until we actually see a clear-cut picture so yeah thanks for watching as usual and i'll see you for the next one peace